It's not looking good, everybody. It's not looking good. Sorry. I'm Erica, and I'm distraught. I just left the bike repair shop. I had to ride my scooter to get here. My bike, my favorite bike, my newly renovated classic, the beautiful bike. It's broken. There's a chance it could be repaired, but there's also a chance. Ah! My bicycle has <laughs> eaten her last ride. It's not looking good, guys. I apologize. <laughs> I'm not very good today at showing contentment. <sighs> contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. But how can I be okay with my bike I may not have anymore? <gasps> the memories. Oh. Hand. I'll sure miss that old girl. You know, I don't think I'll ever be happy again. Unless they're able to repair my bike. Or unless I can save up enough money to buy a new bike. But until then, I guess I'm gonna have to be sad. Because my bike is broken. Because it's, it's, it's broken. In today's story, We'll hear about some people who were stuck somewhere between where they used to be and where they wanted to go. If only they could have been okay with what they had in the present. Hi. I have a scooter. I can ride it to the store to go look at new bikes. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> the store is the other way. <laughs> the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Exodus, chapters 16 and 17. The Israelites had lived as slaves in Egypt for hundreds of years, but God worked miraculous signs and parted the waters of the Red Sea to lead them to freedom. Sing to the Lord, he is greatly honored. He has brought Pharaoh's horses and chariot drivers into the Red Sea. God's people were free. But it didn't take long for all that singing and celebrating to turn into whining. The Israelites complained to their leader, Moses. You must want all of us to die of hunger out here. Yeah, we had it good in Egypt. All the food we wanted. You do remember you were slaves, right? But we had so much meat we could barbecue every day. <sighs> the people continued to grumble, so Moses took their complaints to the Lord. The people don't trust you to give them food. I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people must go out each day. Have them gather enough bread for that day. Moses and Aaron called the people of Israel together to share God's words. Come to the Lord. He has heard you speak against him. As Aaron spoke, the glory of the Lord appeared as a cloud in the desert. Once again, God spoke to Moses. Tell the people, when the sun goes down, you will eat meat. In the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Moses and Aaron told the people everything that God had said. In the evening, you will know that the Lord brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord. He will give you meat to eat in the evening. He'll give you all the bread you want in the morning. Ha! Seeing is believing. Then you should probably look over there. Whoa. A large flock of quail, more birds than anyone had ever seen, settled upon the camp like a twittering, fluttering ocean. Quail barbecue for dinner! That evening, everybody in the camp ate their fill. And in the morning, heavy dew settled on the ground. And as it dried, it left something behind. What's this? Looks like snow. Like what? The stuff that falls on mountaintops. Flaky, white, tastes like honey. 
This is manna. It's the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Gather only as much as you need for the day. What about tomorrow? Don't keep any of it until morning. God will give us what we need then. The Israelites gathered up the manna, sharing until each family had enough. Manna cakes, manna pudding, manna tostadas. Manna and quail pizza. Some people disobeyed God and tried to keep leftovers until the next day. Ew. But any manna kept overnight filled with maggots. Ugh. As long as the Israelites stayed in the desert, the Lord provided fresh manna for them to eat every single morning. Time to move camp. The Israelites soon moved to their next camp in Rephidim, and although manna was plentiful, fresh water was not. Seriously, I am so parched. Even though God had worked miracle upon miracle and provided food from nowhere, the Israelites still panicked. They turned on Moses once again. Give us water to drink right now. Why are you arguing with me? Don't you trust the Lord? Why did you lead us out of Egypt? At least we had water there. Now we're all going to die of thirst. The Israelites were so angry, they actually picked up stones to throw at Moses. Frustrated, Moses cried out to the Lord. Well, what am I gonna do with these people? They're ready to kill me. Go out in front of the people. Take the walking stick you used when you struck the Nile River. I will stand there in front of you by the rock at Mount Horeb. Hit the rock, then water will come out of it. Thank you, Lord. Moses called the leaders and the people of Israel together. Come up with me to the rock at Mount Horeb. The huge rock overshadowed Moses as he walked beneath it. Walking stick held high. Now see what God will do. Moses struck the rock. Immediately, God caused cold, clear water to gush from the rock, forming a rushing stream below. <gasps> Not bad. Yeah, I guess it beats Egypt for now. Over and over, God showed that he would care for his people, but still the Israelites were tempted to long for what they had before, in spite of their newfound freedom. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt, but then God rescued them and brought them into freedom. You'd think they would be overjoyed, but instead they whined and complained about what they didn't have. Now, it's easy for us to look back at the Israelites and think, how could they act that way? Didn't they realize what God had done for them? But the truth is, we can sometimes whine and complain when we don't immediately get what we want. Sometimes we look backwards, like when we start a new school year. My teacher last year didn't give us much homework. Sometimes we look to the future, like when we're waiting for something exciting. I want Christmas to be here right now! We spend all this time looking backward and forward that we completely forget to look at what we have right now. For instance, right now, I may not have a bicycle, but I do have a scooter. What about you? Think about it. Don't think about what you don't have. Think of what you do have. It could be a favorite toy or a favorite thing to wear. It could be friends. Could be a place to sleep at night. Could be family. What do you have right now? I can tell you one thing you have no matter who you are. You have a God who loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. And that will always be true. Here's the one thing to remember today. Don't miss out on what you have right now. Right now, I have a good attitude. I've got strength and energy and I've got a scooter to ride around on. I'm so content. <laughs> I'll see ya. Vroom.